My name is Alistair Lee. In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of adding multiple signatures to an adaptive form using integration with Adobe Sign. Now, Adobe Sign integration with Adobe Experience Manager isn't new, but in AEM 6.3, we've made several improvements that enable things like anonymous users, multiple signature support, improved authentication methods, as well as improved APIs. Before we get started editing our form, there are some prerequisites that you'll need to have this work, including setting up a cloud configuration service with Adobe Sign. So let's take a look at that now by logging into Adobe Experience Manager. Before we move to the cloud services page, you'll need to make sure that you're using SSL. You've got an encrypted connection using HTTPS as your protocol. That's a requirement for setting up your Adobe Sign cloud service. Once you've got SSL enabled, you can move to cloud services by clicking on tools, deployment, and then cloud services. But halfway down the page, you'll see a section specifically for Adobe Sign. If you click on Show Configurations, you can add your own configuration. You can see I've already got one set up called Sign Config. If I click on that, you'll see I've got a client ID, a client secret, and I've enabled the ability to sign attachments. To get these values, you'll need to log in to your Adobe Sign developer account and create a new API application. As you create that new application on Adobe Sign, it'll automatically give you your client ID and client secret that you can enter into this configuration. Once that's set up, we can go and look at our form. And I'll do that by clicking on Adobe Experience Manager, clicking on Navigation, Forms, and then Forms and Documents. Now, I've already set up a very basic purchase agreement that we're going to use to add multiple signatures. But before I open it up into editing mode, there's one change I want to make to the properties. I'm going to do that by clicking on properties. What we'll actually be signing is the document of record. So we need to make sure that that document of record exists. And we can either uh, upload our document of record using this form model and selecting Associate Form Template as the document of record, or we can dynamically generate a document of record automatically, which is what we're going to do in this case. I'm going to select Generate Document of Record and click Save. Once that's been saved, I'm going to choose to edit our form, opening it up in editing mode. Now, this is a very basic form at this point. We've got fields for the seller's name and email address, the buyer's name and email address, as well as the item description. To add our signature fields, I'm going to move to the Components tab, making sure, obviously, that our sidebar is open. And the very first component here is the Adobe Sign block. We're going to simply drag and drop that directly onto our form. And in this case, we're going to add two of them, one for the seller and one for the buyer. So I'll take another one of these, put it right underneath. Now, if we configure these by clicking on the wrench icon, you can see that they're fairly basic. We can give each of these components a name and a title, but they're actually not going to show up as we look at the finished version of the form. These are going to be hidden objects. What we do need to show up is something called the signature step. And the signature step is a component that's going to display our document of record for each of our signers. So let's take a look at adding that. I'm going to add it to our Section 2 of the form. So let's first click on Section 2, then I'll move back to my components, and then scroll down until I see this Signature Step object. I'm going to take that component and drag it onto the form itself. And this is a fairly large block, as you can see, and that's because it is going to be used to display our document of record. Now, we don't have to configure this, but we do need to configure the adaptive form itself when it comes to our digital signatures. To do that, I'm going to make sure that the adaptive form is selected, not our signature step. And with that selected, I'm going to click on the Configure button. This gives me the ability to configure all of the properties of the adaptive form. But if I scroll down near the bottom, I can see the properties for electronic signatures. So the Enable Adobe Sign should be checked automatically now that you've added those Adobe Sign blocks. But if it's not, just make sure that that is enabled. You'll need to specify your Adobe Sign cloud service. If you've only got one like me, it'll automatically be pre-populated. I can see it here. If not, you can choose it from your drop-down list box. You can choose whether the signature fields need to be signed in a specific order or not. So if they need to be 
signed in a specific order. You can choose sequentially and define the order in which they need to be signed. If you don't care when each person signs the document, you can choose simultaneously and that way they can be signed in any order. Even though the seller is going to be filling out this form before he or she signs it, it will also be emailed to that individual. So they can choose to sign it as they're filling out the form or sign it later through their email. I'm going to leave this as sequential because we're going to have the seller first sign this and then have the buyer sign it with the seller's signature already available. Next, we can configure our different signers. So we've got one automatically here for our seller. We can give it a title. In this case, I've called this seller. We can indicate whether the individual in this case is the same person who's filling out the form, which in this case it is. The seller is creating the form. That's going to be the person who signs it. And then we can choose the seller's email address. So we can grab the email address of the logged in user. We can have somebody type an email address at runtime, or we can take it from one of the fields that we've already got in the form. And since we already have a field on the form for the seller, we can select that. So if we don't already have that selected, I can choose from this drop down list box, seller email. At this point, I can also specify the authentication method. By default here, we've got none, but we can choose phone-based authentication. This will send a PIN code to the user's phone number. Again, we can get that phone number from a field on the form. We can use knowledge-based based authentication if the person who's signing it is in the US. This will actually ask the signer for some additional information like their address, uh, the last four digits of the social security number, and then validate that information with a third party. Or we can use social identity-based authentication using social media like Google and Facebook and LinkedIn to authenticate this individual. For this demo, I'm just going to leave this set to none. And then from the Adobe Sign fields to fill or sign, I'll select our first Adobe Sign block and then click OK. Since we've got two signature blocks on this form, I'm going to click Add Signer to add an additional signer. We'll configure this one as well. We'll rename this to the buyer. Uh, so we'll again choose use an email provided in this form. This time we'll select the buyer's email and we'll leave the signer authentication method as none and click the Adobe Sign block and click Done. I'll save these changes and we're ready to test our form. Do that by going back to my form here and clicking preview and preview as HTML. All right, so we've got our purchase agreement. Let's sell something. I'm going to put my own information in here as the seller. And Conrad Sims as the buyer. And let's just say he's buying a new house. I'll click Next. And now Adobe Experience Manager will generate that document of record that can be used with uh, Adobe Sign and the two signature fields and display that document of record directly on the form itself. And I can see here I've got the ability to sign this form as I'm filling it out. So I can click here to sign. It's automatically pre-populated my name because it knows it's me. I'll click Apply and then click to sign. Now, I happen to be already logged in to Adobe Sign, so it's automatically taken that credential and applied it. I've successfully signed this, and a copy of this signed document has been sent to Conrad for him to sign. Let's go ahead and take a look at Conrad's email box here, and I can see that we've got this brand new email that says, please sign purchase agreement. It's sent from me. And I've got a link here that I can use to sign the document as Conrad. Now, again, I'm already logged in as Alistair Lee to Adobe Sign. So I'm going to open this link up in a private window so we can view it as Conrad. And we can see here our second signature block set up for Conrad. Conrad can click to sign it. Type in his name. Click Apply. And then click to sign. Conrad has now signed the document of record. We've got a document of record signed by both parties and a document of record that's been sent to both parties. So both Conrad and I will receive the 
adaptive form that's got two different signatures on. That's how to create an adaptive form that uses multiple signatures with Adobe Experience Manager 6.3. Thanks for your time.